Greetings subscribers and other curious persons. Welcome to another vlog inspired by the Goodreads Tuesday Talks group. Uh, this week's topic is what are some problematic tropes or character types? Uh, as a huge fan of the Cthulhu mythos, I run into problematic tropes and characterizations a reasonable amount. Whilst H.P. Lovecraft was brilliant at writing cosmic horror, he drew from a almost endemic hatred of the other. He didn't like immigrants, he didn't like non-Caucasians who stayed in their own countries because he had a fear that they were going to sweep over him. So he was pretty much the poster boy for the concept of the yellow peril. Asians on waiting to destroy Western civilization. So. I think the first problematic trope or character type that uh, I'd like to mention is the concept of civilizational degeneration, that mixing with other races destroys some idea of purity, that the Greeks and the Romans created civilization, the Caucasians carried it on, and other races sought to either destroy it for their own means or merely by existing weaken and destroy it. And when Britain in the wheel world, they Eskimos worship a demon who wants to devour humanity and are all cannibals and racism, racism, racism. You can see it. You think to yourself, well, that doesn't seem quite right. Similarly, if it's Africans or another group, even if it's inverted and it's Caucasians destroying Aztec or Zimbabwean civilization, because it's in the real world, you can see it. But where it becomes more problematic is when it's one remove in speculative fiction. Instead of Caucasians versus Asians, or citizens versus immigrants. It's the Armithrax versus the Gorshabarians, or the Orcs versus the Elves, where not direct racism, it's the same tribal conflict that racism represents retasked as two separate groups that aren't of the same race, where evil orcs wish to wipe out the good elves and whether or not there is a direct one-to-one -one comparison in descriptions there are often the same shortcuts for racism so if you consider an uruk high and put a picture of an uruk high next to a US poster about the Japanese from the 1940s, 
you'll see a lot of the same things. So the problem at the first problematic trope would be this reductionism, this either overt racism or racism at one remove, where an entire group of aliens, fantasy creatures, fictional wizards, whatever, is seen not as individuals who happen to share certain qualities, but as a homogenous group, a swarm, if you will, or a zerg rush or whatever metaphor you want to use that doesn't have anything about it other than its antagonism towards whatever is good and right. So my second problematic trope or character type is a reversal of this, the unexpected elevation, the idea that certain groups have a betterness to them, that the little old Japanese master who is peaceful, enlightened, good at gardening, good at making sushi, has lots of positive things, helps his neighbours, speaks quietly, moves calmly, and can also fight ridiculously well in a martial art. And somehow has all of these powers, both social, physical, mental, spiritual, but doesn't have equivalent boundaries or conflicts or issues. It's better. They take the goodness from a particular group and describe a lot of it to that character without also adding individuality. So the character is very good at meditation. In the real world, there are people who are very good at meditation, but most of them don't live in a brownstone in Detroit and work in a car wash and still be very good at meditation, this little master and so on. <clears throat> so, again, people are complex rather than simplistic. So, yes, definitely have characters from a particular race be good at the things that originated in that country, that are common in that country. So, a Chinese man in his late 50s who is really good at Kung Fu is realistic. But having him be the only Chinese man in the book, and he's good at Kung Fu, or he's good at Kung Fu, his son's good at Kung Fu, and his son's girlfriend is good at Kung Fu. And again, it's <clears throat> breaking the characterization by not making them characters, but making them cutouts. 
and which moves on to the third trope I have problems with the person who is different from the norm the rebel again people rebel teenagers often reject their parents beliefs their parents interests the things that they did as children either to reject their parents at one remove or to make a clean break with childhood by putting aside childish things but the one person who isn't good at something is exactly the same as the one person who is only reversed so again make them complex if someone rebels against their parents their society their racial stereotype that's great there's a lot of conflict in that but it's problematic if they rebel by ceasing to be any of these things if someone rebels against something in real life they suffer from what Heraclitus said was opposites being within each other or what some Eastern philosophies call yin and yang that things are intertwined by rejecting something strongly you make yourself about that thing because to be bad at classical music I'm bad at playing classical music because I've never picked up an instrument and I don't own them well actually that's not true I picked up a recorder which is semi-classical and I've bashed the occasional drum with a drumstick but I've never taken music lessons and so I'm not good at classical music but I'm not rebelling against classical music if I was rebelling against classical music my story would be about not playing classical music rather than merely a story that didn't have me playing classical music in it so rebels become problematic when either their rebellion is too clean that they say I'm not playing the flute anymore and then they just for the rest of the story don't play the flute and there are no consequences to it but also it's problematic if they say I'm not playing the flute anymore and the rest of the story is all about them playing the flute or not playing the flute and there isn't anything other than that so a character that's defined again by one thing is problematic so I don't know if there is actually some problematic tropes or character types that trouble me or whether it's the issue of reductionism taking the complexity of the world and narrowing it down too much so by all means have a gruff police sergeant who has a weak spot for children if he appears in one or two scenes 
but a gruff police sergeant with a weakness for children isn't so great if it's a police procedural and that's all he is. The more a person takes part in the narrative, whether as protagonist, supporting cast, antagonist, victim of a murder, whatever, the more complexity they need, the more conflict they need, the more ambiguity and irreconcilability they need, because humans are capable of holding contradictory thoughts at the same time. And so people are complex. And if you demonstrate them as not being complex, then it's not very plausible. And depending on what your reductionism is, it's also not necessarily very socially, morally or ethically responsible. Reducing people down turns them from individuals into chunks that can be swapped in and out. And that reduces them in effect to objects that we don't care about what happened to a battery while it was hanging in the packet in the shop because batteries are objects, they're interchangeable. But we care about what happened to the shopkeeper. We care about people because people are complex. So the problem is when we reduce them down, not because we are only taking the little bit of them that fits into this story and the rest of it isn't part of the story because they only tangentially touch it, but because we're simplifying them into demon-worshipping cannibals or invading atheists or whatever. So I think that's gotten political enough for the subject of reading for entertainment. So, toodaloo.